from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the daily TV Mass. I am Father Tomasz Skibinski. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from a family who are parishioners of St. Clement Parish in Etobicoke, Ontario. This Mass is offered for the repose of the souls of Delphine de Souza and for other deceased family members. May their souls and the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God Rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And in your spirit. Brothers and sisters, as we continue our Lenten journey and get closer to the very heart of our faith, and as we celebrate this Mass, let us first of all ask the Lord for pardon and mercy for our sins so that we may worthily celebrate these holy mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Be near, O Lord, to those who plead before you and look kindly on those who place their hope in your mercy, that cleansed from the stain of their sins, they may persevere in holy living and be made, f and be made full heirs of your promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And I will give to you and to your offspring after you the land where you are now an alien, all the land of Canaan for a perpetual holding and I will be their God. God said to Abraham, As for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your offspring after you, throughout their generations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Seek his presence continually. 
His judgments are in all the earth. The Lord remembers His covenant forever. He is mindful of His covenant forever. Of the word that He commanded for a thousand generations. The covenant one promise to Isaac. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the people, Very truly I tell you, whoever keeps my words will never see death. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, and so did the prophets, yet you say, Whoever keeps my words will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died? The prophets also died. Who do you claim to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, he of whom you say he is our God, though you do not know, though you do not know him but I know him. If I would say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you, but I do know him and I keep his word. Your ancestor Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, you are not yet 50 years old and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. As I was saying last week in my homily, we see how the animosity uh, towards Jesus is escalating. And we've been listening to this, uh, to the Gospel of St. John and this uh, dialogue between Jesus and the Jews and the whole controversy and such a misunderstanding of or not understanding at all who Jesus is. Who is this man? Who is this person that is going around on one hand doing miracles, you know, maybe on the other aggravating the people, the, the, the authorities, the one who claims to be the Son of God, they are asking him, who are you? Who are you? We've heard this in the gospel in those past couple of days. Today we hear again, who do you claim to be? Who is this Jesus? Who is this, who is this the one that has, that has come that is doing all those things? And yet Christ does not hide the truth, but he speaks very openly. And he speaks very openly to us today as well. And again, he repeats this. And this is something amazing what the Lord is saying to us today. He says, very truly I tell you, whoever keeps my word will never see death. We are approaching the Passover feasts and we know that you know, there is rejection, there is passion, there is crucifixion, death, and there is resurrection. And we know that death 
has been conquered, that Christ has overcome death. But Christ says, whoever keeps my words will never see death. Those who guard my words, those who keep them deeply within their hearts, those who are willing to not only listen but to obey my words will not see death. Are we not, in a certain way, afraid of death, afraid of, you know, what is coming, afraid of, you know, that one day we are just going to, what, disappear? Uh, we are afraid of suffering. We are afraid of, you know, when things change in our lives. We are afraid of death. You know, death, we can say, surrounds us every day. We see what is happening around the world. We see, you know, the one nation, you know, attacking the other. We see innocent people dying. There is death. Maybe, you know, just, just the other day, you know, a lady, um, you know, spoke to me and, you know, she was so heartbroken because of the death of her grandson, uh, a, young, a young boy, you know, who had cancer. Christ says, those who keep my words will never see death. This is our deepest desire in life, that we may not see death anymore. And, you know, as we continue this journey of faith, you know, the, the church also speaks to us, gives us this example of, of Abraham, the father of faith, the, the one who believed the word. And what has he seen? Christ says, Abraham saw my day and he rejoiced. Uh, he rejoiced. What was the day that Abraham saw? He already has seen the power of God, that God is stronger than death. Even though he was called, he was asked to offer his son Isaac, and Isaac means laughter. When Abraham uh, held this little child in his, in his arms, he, he, he rejoiced, he laughed. But then the Lord asks him to offer this child to him, and we know what happened. Abraham, first of all, he saw that God is capable of bringing life out of the death womb of his wife, but not only this, that God is really giving the son to him forever, and not only him, but all those whom God has promised to him, all this multitude of the nations, and one of those sons is Jesus Christ, the one who, has, who is rising from the death, who is overcoming death, and this is the day that Abraham saw. Abraham has already seen the power of, the, of God, that God, is, that God is able to do what is impossible for us to do. And this is really a good news. This is already a good preparation for us. But surely, just as Christ will have to go through the Golgotha, just as Abraham had to go through the, through the Mount of Moriah where, where he was to sacrifice his son, we also need in our lives go through those moments that sometimes are difficult, and yet, if we keep God's word, we will not see death. Maybe in your sickness, you will not see death, but life. Maybe, you know, in the relationships that are difficult, it's not, there is no death, but life. Why? Because we do not rely on ourselves. We don't, do not rely on our own strength, but really we can put our trust in the one who has overcome death. And today, as we celebrate this mass, this is exactly what is happening. Every Mass is, is a memorial, not only just a simple remembering, but it is actually something that becomes, that becomes true among us as we celebrate, that God once again destroys death, destroys all those things that are so difficult for us. So let us pass on to this table. Let us once again put our trust to Him. Let us open our ears and our hearts to receive his word. Let us now stand and together let us offer to the Lord our prayers and petitions. Let us ask first of all for the church that has been called to announce the victory of life over death, that the church may always proclaim to this generation the power of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the world that we live in, this world that is torn apart by violence by hatred, we pray that the Lord's peace may descend upon all the nations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those in the daily TV Mass community who have asked to be included in our prayer intentions book, especially those facing changes in their lives and those who journey with them, 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have preceded us on the journey to the Father's house, uh, those who, for whom we pray in this Mass, those who are dear to us. We pray that the Lord may receive them in His kingdom of glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God Almighty Father, we ask that you may welcome, receive, and fulfill those prayers according to your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine and we offer you fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his whole church. Look with favor, Lord, we pray on these sacrificial offerings, that they may profit our conversion and the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Amen. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord for the kingdom, kingdom the power and the glory of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace of Christ, peace of Christ.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for the blessing. Be gracious to your people, Lord, we pray, that as from day to day they reject what does not please you, they may be filled instead with delight at your commands through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.